looking at the data points as the camera peak fire started and as it progressed, um, we had elk that were just on the perimeter of the fire and it never really moved them off their locations. So it didn't make them run 50 miles in one direction or another. They kind of still just stayed there even though there was active fire, there was smoke in the area. And um, as you see the fire is progressing, you can see the elk actually move into the active fire perimeter. And my thought is, is that there are islands of unburned habitat within the perimeter that the elk were going to, to use. And so from there, they just continued on their regular um, summer range and now they're going into their fall migration and you can actually see them moving through the burned areas. Is there anything specific with how long this fire is burned and could continue to burn that could have effects? I think like, I guess, showcasing that there were animals, like there were colored elk up in the Carrion Island uh, Basin, which was adjacent to where the fire started, and they never really moved out of there. Um, it just kind of showcases that animals are very well adapted and they know when there's danger and when there's not danger. And um, the nutrition that is afforded up in those areas was probably more valuable than them moving down into other areas where there wasn't as high as nutrition available during that time. And I think overall, like the, how long the fire has been going. Um, interestingly enough, it's burned mainly the summer range of the elk. So they were going to already migrate down anyway, but it's going to be interesting to see when they migrate back to their summer range, how that's going to affect their movement patterns. And if they're gonna to go to the same locations as they did the previous year. What could be some of the reasons of staying in the burned areas? Was it the, the snow that happened um, during the first portion of, of this fire? And was there a little green up or anything like that that, you, that you've seen? Yeah, I think just naturally they weren't ready to migrate. So they were still staying where they were all summer in the general locations. And then, like you said, the snow happened in mid-September. And when it melted in the burn area, it actually produced a green up. So it would be almost like surfing the green wave that you would see in the migration um, corridors. So they basically were staying there and probably hopping to the areas where the green forbs and forage were being produced after the snow had melted and uh, the sun and the warm weather produced the plants. Let me just talk about the general instincts and, and behavior that for wildlife when there's wildfire. I mean, they survived fire for, for thousands of years. Yeah, I mean, in general, they know when it's not safe and they get out of there. They don't generally run too far. And I'm talking about more the megafauna. Um, I'm sure there has been a lot of deaths occurred for like the squirrels and the rabbits, ones that can't move quite as easily as the bigger animals, but they don't generally run too far away because they don't know how far the fire is going to spread. You'll see images of animals running out when there's active fire and there's smoke because they were probably going into a drainage as they were being pushed and all of a sudden the fire behavior turned on them. And so then they needed to speed up and get out of that area. I think um, people should know that we don't necessarily know the effects that this fire is going to have on wildlife in general. It's still uh, in the learning process and there's a lot of research that needs to go in to figuring out how does mega fires like this affect the, the wildlife that's out there and how should we best manage it? Talk about the study and why there are colored elk there. Sure. So um, the study was initiated because we didn't have a good grasp of what the elk herd was doing. And this is the Poudre Canyon Red Feather Lakes elk herd. And so what I did is this last February, I collared 30 female elk, so cow elk. And from there, I'm going to use them as Judas elk to locate them to do composition flights to figure out the age and the sex of animals that we have on the landscape which will then go into a population model. And then on a side of that, I was going to look at their movement data to look at migration corridors, um, areas of greatest conservation needs is kind of the, the roundabout way of um, getting down to the data, the population data that I need. 